Hey everybody and welcome to the Covenant Network broadcast. This is Randy Morgan and I'm coming to you today from the sanctuary of New Covenant Church of Atlanta where the Spirit of God is being poured out upon all people. Today I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about the Word of God can set things right. The Word of God can set things right. Before we get started, let's pray. Father, I pray for everyone listening. I pray, God, that you build their faith in the ability of you in the power of your Word. And so, Father, today I just thank you for this time we have together. I pray that everyone has their Bibles. I pray that everyone makes it a daily effort to get into your Word by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And everybody said Amen. Amen. Well, first of all, I want to talk to you. Your Bible is the most prized possession you will ever own as a Christian. I say that quite often. I'm beginning to think that it's going to become one of my standard slogans in ministry because I believe in the power of the blood, the power of the word, and the power of the name. Blood, word, name. I, I, I just feel like those are the foundations of covenant and everything that we interact with God in the supernatural and the heavenly realms are based upon everything we do based upon the blood, the word, and the name. Covenantal actions, covenantal activities, covenantal concepts that are necessary for authentic interaction with Jehovah our Father. Amen? Amen. And so, anyway, today I want to talk for just a few minutes about the power of the word. In the beginning, the earth was formless and without void. And you can go to Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 and you can read about the power and the influence of the word of God, particularly in Genesis chapter 1. It's very interesting to me. Before we ever learn that God is a loving God, before we learn that God has a name, before we learn that God loves us, before we learn anything else about God, we learn that God is a speaking God and that the way God creates creates, He does it through His Word. People say, God, give us revival. Well, how is God going to create revival? It's going to be through His Word. How does God create everything else? If we want power and demonstration and His presence, whatever we desire from God, even if it's as simple as His presence coming into our lives and flooding our lives, it has to be created by the power of His Word. God speaks, things happen. And so anyway, in Genesis chapter 1, we see that God God said, God said, let there be, let there be, let there be. And everything became a reality because God said, let there be. And, and it needs to be understood right now that God's word has creative power. In Acts 19 verse 20, it says this, the word of God grew mightily and prevailed. Now listen to some of the translations. The, the Weymouth translation says that the word of God spread and triumphed. I love that. It says that it, it was growing, the Lord's message, the word of the Lord was growing wonderfully in influence and power. Another translation says, <clears throat> excuse me, so the word of God, the word of the Lord, it was increasing very greatly and was full of power. Now in Acts chapter 12, verse 24, we see some uh, very similar, a very similar verse. Acts 12, 24. And it says this, but the word of God grew and multiplied. The word of the Lord went on growing and multiplying. It says that it was spreading far and wide and it kept extending. Uh, the word of God grew strong and spread wide. It continued to gain ground and increase in its influence. The word of God has power. His word has amazing life-changing power. And then we read in Hebrews 11.3 that God framed the world with His Word. And we learn that everything is held together by His mighty Word of power. Hebrews 1.3 says that. I particularly like the passage in Hebrews 11.3 that says God framed the world with His Word. The Greek word for framed is katartizo. Katartizo. And that literally means to fit together, to arrange to complete, to set up, to repair, to re repair, to restore, mend, and reconnect. God's Word, in, in His Word, has repairing, restoring, mending, fitting, and arranging power in it. 
And we have that word available to us every single day of our lives. When God speaks, He with a word makes something out of nothing, is what Romans 4.17 says. With a word, He makes something out of nothing. God's word can set things right. If you are sick, God's word can mend you. If you have a broken relationship, God's word can mend and set in order. Catartizo is a medical term. And it literally means when an arm is broken, that the the bone is placed back into place and then wrapped up so that it can mend on its own. That's what catartizo means. It's a medical term meaning that when something is broken, it can be fixed. God's Word has healing power in it to fix whatever's wrong. He sent His Word and healed us. It says in, in His Word that He sent His Word and it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish what it's sent forth to do. I encourage you today, take your Bible and if you are in an environment that is toxic, begin to read Psalms into that environment. Just take your Bible. This word can put inside your heart and spoken out of your mouth has healing, restorative, mending, and repairing power in it. If you want the power of God and the presence of God, many of you are hungry for revival in your cities and you're thirsty for God to come in in power and demonstration. There's only one way He's coming in power and demonstration. That's through honoring the Word of God. Through taking the Word of God and beginning to deposit it into the spiritual atmosphere. If you're called to be a pastor and nobody's coming, you need to stand in your living room and just begin to read the Word of God until God opens a door for you to be able to minister to people and impart the Word. The Word has restoring creative power. People will be drawn to a person who puts the Word first in their life. And then God will be drawn to a people who celebrate the Word above all things. Somebody may say, well, Pastor, I believe that the, the worship should be celebrated above the Word. Well, that's not true because people don't even know how to worship without the Word. Worship cannot be put in order. It cannot be a repairing worship or restoring worship or any kind of worship without first going by the Word of God. We have to study the Word to find out what God's plans are concerning worship in order to make worship an institution that's fitting for God's presence. People may say, well, Pastor, I believe if I make this doctrine the priority, then, then, then that's what will draw God's presence. No, 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 no. Genesis to Revelation. We have to get in the concept of making the Word the top priority. Only the Word, does it say in the book of Acts, extended throughout the city and caused people to be drawn and caused thousands to be saved and caused a revival where God's presence was able to come in power and demonstration. It takes the Word of God. The Word of God must be in the highest place in the believer's life. If we'll take this book and we'll put it in our hearts and we'll put it in our eyes and we'll get it in our ears by, by getting it in our vision and seeing it and by contemplating it and speaking it and getting it into our ears, it will begin to repair us. It will begin to repair the atmospheres around us. God's Word has creative power and it says that the worlds were framed by the Word. If you want to frame a place for the presence of God, then the Word of God does that. If you want to frame a place, if you want to, uh, a frame, we think of a frame and it's what a picture goes in. So a frame accents an image. A frame sets the parameters for it. If we want to frame a place for the presence of God to dwell in, it has to be framed with the Word. The Word of God becomes the boundaries for which we operate and function in our lives and in our churches. I encourage you today, understand this. The Word of God has creative, healing, restoring, mending power. And if you'll get the Word in your mouth and begin to speak it, it will stir you up. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mouth. Spirit of faith, we believe, therefore have we spoken. That's the spirit of faith, and we need it in our lives now more than ever. Well, God bless you. I pray this has blessed you. Please break open your Bibles, get into the Word of God, and see what God has to say to you, and watch a revival of the Word give birth to a whole new process in your life, a whole new season. All right, God bless you. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you here at New Covenant Church of Atlanta really soon.